the engineering too, we had a wonderful time. Unfortunately, not academically, because that was a time in my college, there was a total dearth of teaching staff. Then, the, that particular college, which had taken the best of the students in the state, merit list, when they had taken, and we decided, a group of us, we are not going to end up not learning something. Look at the initiative at those days, what we did. We made a study team, study committee, and we did not have money to buy books which cost those days 80 rupees, 90 rupees, like Milman and Halkias was 91 rupees, I still remember. We could not buy it. In, in fact, so many textbooks, one each we bought, and we used to write down with multiple carbon copy papers. It is a, a violation, it's a piracy if you think of it today. But, you know, uh, we did not realize at that age. And we used to share our textbooks in that manner. And uh, we had a study circle. And we had some connection, somebody in IASC, somebody working somewhere. Why not go and meet them and ask them to explain? And we went on like that. I think we became better engineers than we would have been if we were in any other engineering college where they were tutoring, you know, like, um, you know, cramming the subjects. We appreciated the subjects better and uh, especially me, though we had to answer only five out of eight questions, that's a great thing in Bangalore University those days and very predictable which question comes from which chapter, I always felt that I have to read all eight chapters, all eight topics because this is my last chance to go through these textbooks. From next year onwards, next semester onwards, I don't know whether I'll be able to read it or not. That was the curiosity and interest in learning the subjects and that is how the education went on. And uh, coming to uh, the end of the, um, you know, our graduation, uh, naturally, uh, most of us were selected and I had at least nine jobs on my hand and I got selected into an Indian Institute of Science to, to do my master's. And, uh, but as part of the um, you know, engineering curriculum, we had some industrial visits at which time I had visited Israel. Back then it was really in sheds in Pina in uh, 1982, uh, all uh, dilapidated buildings and uh, we were taken there. But Listening to the youngsters who explained us what ISRO was doing, though at that time there were more failures than successes for ISRO, and there were uh, SLVs which had failed, and uh, we had uh, just then made one satellite, Aryabhatta, that with the help of uh, uh, Russia we could launch it. And uh, having done all that and not being in the limelight, still, it was so attractive being there. I made up my mind, this is a place where I'm going to join. And these kind of decisions will happen as you groom yourself from childhood, taking decisions for yourself and making life choices. And by the way, sideline, I had already made life choice of who my husband is going to be, with whom I'm going to live. That was Abba. Then I decided to join ISRO. Then I waited for it. The moment the order came, I was there. I just dropped everything else. And there is not a single day I regretted my decision. It was so fantastic. Having joined ISRO, you know, it is not a fantasy that uh, tomorrow you are working on some hi-fi, uh, high advanced system. No. Those were the days we had a severe crunch for the foreign exchange. We were trying to do everything ourselves, which really put me into a great advantage that I could learn a lot. And in fact, when I joined, I understood that after graduation is when your education really begins in your career. So uh, it was a fantastic team and we were learning so many things and uh, building our own things, though there were many uh, foreign things available, but we built our own interfaces and uh, 
uh, another thing, the interesting thing that happened was, I was put into a group where we were supposed to test the satellites on the ground. We have to develop our own equipments, we have to interface to satellites on our own, take the safety of the satellite. Everything end to end in ISRO has to be done by the team. It's not piecemeal job like uh, today IT companies and so many places, I ask them, what are you doing? And they will never have a big picture. We always had a big picture. Why am I doing as a young engineer? When I joined, I knew why exactly I'm doing something. Where do I fit into the big picture of ISRO? So uh, that was the uh, you know excitement. And uh, there was also a feeling that, oh, I was put into the ground systems. And I'm not doing any package or electronics or any system for which goes into the satellite and which will fly. So, you know, uh, that was a kind of a uh, superiority and uh, things like that which existed among the young engineers. But for me, I always loved challenges. I took this as a challenge, okay? So I understood every onboard system in the process of testing the satellites. And satellites were there in front of me and it gave me a great advantage to get the big picture of what a satellite is and how I take care of it end to end. Starting from its uh, you know, structure, which is like a uh, skeleton in the body, I saw it fly with the wings in, uh, in the rocket. And what an excitement. And you are sitting there controlling the last command, the ground command you are giving for the uh, uh, satellite before it is taking off. And you see the satellite being ejected and reaching its slot. It is something totally different world feeling that gets. And the more you feel proud of what you are doing, you can contribute better. And in my process of doing my job, I always, I always had one more thing that I will have a competition, not with anybody, but to improve myself. So it was a silent competition I used to do and I enjoyed the competition. I would also reward myself whenever I passed the competition. You know, it was a fun thing and uh, I really encourage all youngsters to do that instead of competing with others. So every year, every satellite I work on, I will become an expert on one system of the satellite and I will understand the in and out of it, how it is going to work. That is one competition. And you know, as things become repetitive sometimes, don't think that scientists are doing something exciting every day. It is 70% repetition and 30% excitement. So even in the repetition, you bring some excitement. Can I do it faster? Can I do it better? You know, uh, how can I improve what I've been doing? How can I automate the thing what I've been doing? And these are some of the things which excited throughout the life. And one more thing which was very important was every step I was in, you know, I was pretty good and I was pretty well appreciated because simply because of the passion I had and the pride I had in me in what I was doing, I could excel in the job what I was doing. I'm an ordinary person, again I'm telling you. It is just the passion and the interest that makes all the difference. So when I did that, so uh, I always thought, today I am a test engineer. I always mentally imagined, let me think I am the project manager. Then how I would have managed these things, what I can do. So in that mental exercises, I was preparing myself for the next position if I think back of it. Now, you know, it was a very good exercise and in fact very soon I got into the management position because I could speak freely and I could give my opinions whether somebody liked it or not because I always had the big picture in mind again, I'm telling you, that whatever you say is not for the greatness of you. Whatever you do is not for the greatness of you to be recognized by others. It is that that particular project, that satellite should become the best. That should have no problems. So in that process, when you genuinely start working, you, know, you learn, you earn the respect of others, and you naturally happens, the growth, etc. will happen. Then very soon I was leading the teams, teams with men and women both together. Um, I had my first project GSAT 12 as a project director. 
and it was so wonderful. It was again going back to the school for me. I was very happy doing my electronic systems as a project director. It is a uh, multi-field activity. You have thermal experts, structural experts who are working with you. The you know mechanisms teams are there, mission teams are there, mathematicians. They are all working with you. And I wondered why am I the project director here? And then. The confidence the management put in me was something which pushed me and told, yes, I can do it. And all I had to do was get back to my old engineering books, brush up your mechanical engineering, brush up your civil engineering. What, you know, we did not concentrate much because we were in electronic stream. So there is nothing called electronics, mechanical or uh, civil when you're doing big projects. So I want to tell the students the same thing. All subjects are very important and they all amalgamate into something big. So we have to keep our minds open and whatever you study is making you capable of learning more. It's not that you have learned everything. A continuous learning process is absolutely essential. That is what I included as part of my life curriculum. Um, I was progressing well on my career and I progressed well on the family. I had a um, family who had extended with two children. Uh, we all had a hectic, beautiful time. Uh, we were going through that and I had higher responsibilities. And by the time GSAC 12 was launched, there was the news everywhere that the first woman project director from ISRO and all that. And that is when it hit me. Oh, well, I was the first woman project director because in Israel, nobody cares whether you are a man or a woman. You are a scientist, you are an engineer there. It's nothing more than that. Nobody gives an extra uh, marks because you are a woman or nobody pushes you down because you are a woman. No, it doesn't happen that way. So all that, you know, hala hala that went on in the newspapers, etc., I felt very shy. And in fact, many of them had the audacity to put in the newspaper without asking me that it was an all-women project and all that. Then I had to deny everywhere. It is something, a, you know, it's a bad name for ISRO. ISRO would never do an all-women project and such things. Never. Then after that, I had several projects on hand. And each of my projects was very unique. My first project was something so unique, it was a communication satellite which had to go on PSLV. A small satellite had to be built. Communication satellites are normally giants. But this was a cute satellite, small one. And it had to be a totally a new design, we had to do that. And immediately after that, I did the biggest satellite for ISRO, that was GSAT 10. And after that, of course, bigger satellites came. Every satellite had a challenge. Uh, new teams, working with the teams, learning all the time. That is what excited me the most. And I finally I moved on as program director where navigation, remote sensing, from geosynchronous orbit communication, weather satellites, all were under me at that point of time. I, when I was started enjoying that, by that time again I moved as director for the uh, SETCAM program for India in headquarters where there were a lot of policy matters. I met the end users, the soldiers, the farmers. I met the highest officers of prime minister, president. And I had the great privilege of sharing the pavilion with ESA and NASA experts in uh, London when they had a royal exhibition panel discussion representing India and Israel. And other fantastic thing was I got an invite when uh, uh, I think it was in 2018, the Nobel, uh, Nobel Laureate uh, uh, Conference was there in Delhi in uh, Rashtrapati Bhavan and I was asked to represent science and technology from India. So there were uh, some very, very, you know, uh, memorable moments that went on. I don't call them as my achievements. What I'm trying to tell again and again is we are ordinary people. Ordinary people, when they put their passion, interest, and 100% dedication into whatever they are doing, nothing can stop them. There was some movie dialogue, right? Power of the Common Man or something like that. Do you remember? Any one of you? Maybe My Time movie or something like that. So it is really true. 
it is true it is the common people ordinary people who can do extraordinary things most of the time